Welcome to our lecture online. Here in this next problem, you really need to understand Ohm's law and the power dissipation in circuits, in resistor circuits, and that's what this is applied to, power in resistor circuits. So in circuit one and circuit two, there's two circuits. R1 is one ohm, R2 is two ohms, and R3 is three ohms, and I'm glad that they did that, otherwise it gets very confusing. So the number of the resistor equals the resistance of each resistor, which is nice. Now P1 and P2 are the power dissipations in circuit one and two when the switches are open. So there's a switch in each circuit when they're open, P1 and P2 are the power dissipation in each of the circuits. When the switches are closed, Q1 and Q2 are then the power dissipations. Which of the following statement or statements is or are correct? And so there's four statements and anywhere from one to four can be correct. I don't know if there's ever been a case where all four were not correct. So I'm assuming at least one is and maybe all four. All right, so what we're going to need to do is first find the total resistance in each of the circuits when the switches are open and then the total resistance in each of the circuits when they are closed. So let's do that. So we have circuit one and I'll I'll put this, I'll put circuit two here because I want to put it in the same order so not to get confused and circuit one over here. There, that's better. So first we do open. So when the switch is open, what are the resistances? All right, so notice we have this branch and this branch in parallel and then in series with this one. Since there's only two branches, we can use the product over the sum rule. So that means that the resistance is going to be equal to the resistance of the first one, which is one, plus the product over the sum here. Now, two and three together is five, so five times half of one, which is a half. So that would be five times a half. Oop, let me write a half here. Divided by five plus a half, so the product over the sum. So this would be equal to um, one plus, that would be uh, 11 halves. Oh no, not 11 halves, that would be five halves, sorry. Five, because we're multiplying five halves divided by, this is 10, 11, that's, this is 11 halves. The one halves cancel out, so we end up with uh, one plus five over 11, which is 16 over 11. Let me write it here, 16 over 11. There. So that is the resistance when the switch is open. When the switch is closed, you now have a, a pad bypassing R1, so that no longer exists. Now we just have these two branches, so we just have this portion alone. So when it's closed, we have R is equal to 5 elevenths. So R equals 16 elevenths when it's open and 5 elevenths when it's closed for circuit 1. So now we do the same thing for circuit 2. Now in circuit 2 we have these three resistors in parallel and the switch is open so this one doesn't count yet. So the total resistance we can calculate by 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So in this case 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 which is 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. The common denominator is 6, so our total, or uh, well, let's go 1 over our total. We won't turn it over yet. 1 over our total is equal to 2 over common denominator of 6. We have 6 plus 3 plus 2, which is uh, 5 plus 8, that's 11 over 6. So therefore, uh, our total is equal to 6 over 11. So that is with the switch open. With the switch closed, we now introduce one additional resistor. So now we have four resistors. So now we have uh, one over our total is equal to one over one plus one over two plus one over three plus one over six because it's two times R3, so one over six. And if we combine all that, common denominator is six. So here we have, uh, let's see here we have 6 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is 12 over 6. So therefore, our total equals 6 over 12 or 1 half, either way. All right, so this is the total resistance when the switch is closed. We should put close down. There we go. 
All right, so now we have our four resistances. The two resistances when the, when the switch is open, the two resistances when the switch are closed. Now we need to realize that if a voltage is applied to either one, then the resistance with then the circuit with the smallest resistance will have the greatest power dissipation. So when resistance is less, then power is more with the same voltage. So the same voltage applied, we can then see that the, if the resistance is less, you have more power. Why is that? Because we know that power equals I squared R, and we know that I is equal to V over R. So you can see that if R is less, I is more, and oop, I should say R, I squared, I put the two in the wrong place, I squared R. So if I gets bigger since it's squared, it will have a bigger impact on the power dissipation. So, for A, when VAB, the voltage between A and B is 6 volts in both circuits, is the power in 1 less than the power in 2? Well, notice that this is the resistance in circuit 1, so let's call it uh, resistance, well, circuit 1, that's our total in circuit 1, and this is the resistance in, in circuit 2. Notice that 6 over 11 is smaller than 16 over 11. Smaller resistance means larger power dissipation. So that means that P2 is bigger than P1, and that's what we have here. P2 is bigger than P1, so this is indeed correct. We have one of the correct answers. Maybe the only one, but that one definitely is correct. All right, now what happens when you put a current through there? Well, when the current is the same, so now we can say same current, then, since the current is the same, through the circuit, then the one with the, well, let's take a look here. If the current is the same, then one with a greater resistance has greater power dissipation, smaller resistance has power dissipation, so now it's the other way around. So notice, switch is still open, because we're dealing with P's. The first circuit has a larger resistor, the second circuit has a smaller resistor, so the power dissipation of the first one must be bigger than the power dissipation of the second one. So same I, that means when R is greater, power is greater. So in this case, bigger resistor, more power. Smaller resistor, less power. So P1 must be bigger than P2, and that is correct as well. Hmm, it has at least two correct answers. Now to answer C. When we again apply 6 volts in the, in, oh, now it's just circuit 1. We put 6 volts here. And now we're comparing the power dissipation when the switch is closed versus the power dissipation when the switch is open. So again, if the resistance goes down, we have more power dissipation. If the resistance goes up, we have less power dissipation. So let's check here. So switch is open, that's the resistance. Switch is closed, that's the resistance. Resistance goes down which means current goes up, and therefore power goes up. So Q1 should be bigger than, Q, than P1. And that's what we have. Q1, the power dissipation when the switch is closed, is therefore bigger than the power dissipation when the switch is open, because when we close the switch, the total resistance of the circuit, I should probably put our total, is smaller. That means greater current means more power dissipation. So the third answer is correct. Wow. Maybe we have a case here where all four of them will be correct. All right, now we put a current of 2 amps in both circuits. But now the switches are closed. Remember, when the same current goes through the circuit, a bigger resistor means greater power. So which has the bigger resistor? Does two, circuit 2 or circuit 1 have a bigger resistor? Well, let's see here. When it's closed, that's the total resistance of circuit 1, and that's the total resistance of circuit 2. Now, 1 half is bigger than 5 elevenths. So this is bigger than this, bigger resistance, bigger power. That means 2 has bigger power than 1, and that's not what it says here. It says 2 has less than 1, that's not correct, so this is not a correct answer. So in this case, for this problem, A, B, and C are correct, D is not correct. And again, this is one of those problems that probably takes more than 3 minutes to accomplish, and that is how it's done.